This is an addendum to the first linking video that I created to make connections between Chapter 20 of Ways of the World and the BBC4 documentary clips that you've had a chance to view on the Congo Free State. There were uh, a number of topics that I didn't have time to fit into that first YouTube clip because I'm limited to 10 minutes. The first of the three themes I'd like to conclude with then is an extension of the last theme that I had taken up in the previous video, and that is how did King Leopold establish a legal basis for the Congo Free State? What we covered last time was chiefly what Leopold did in the European sphere, but there was an important uh, indigenous or uh, Congo Free State dimension to this. Uh, when colonizers in the new imperialism era, uh, and in fact when colonizers in general took over an area to make it into a colony, the tendency was to uh, eliminate the old property rights and the legal system that underpinned them and replace them with a new property rights system. And something uh, very much like that happened in the Congo Free State. Once Leopold had recruited Henry Morton Stanley as his right-hand man. He engaged Stanley to negotiate with indigenous uh, political leaders in what would become the Congo Free State to get them to uh, cede their uh, titles and rights to lands by uh, hook or by crook, as you can imagine. Uh, now, there is a sort of a European dimension to this, as I indicated. This is part of the uh, general Enter broader enterprise of imposing a European legal system, but clearly there's a key uh, indigenous element to these kinds of projects, so I wanted to bring everyone's attention uh, to that. The, the next theme I'd like to take up has to do with the missionaries that you see in the documentary. They don't feature prominently in terms of what they were doing most of the time, that is to say trying to bring Christianity to the indigenous populations that they encountered. Um, instead, uh, they play a different role in the, the uh, subjects that the documentary covers, and that role is uh, basically making the world aware of what was going on in the Congo Free State. So without uh, the U.S. and British missionaries, uh, who were present in the Congo Free State having uh, made people aware of what was going on, we might not have learned as early or maybe even as much uh, as we ultimately did learn um, about what Leopold was doing in the Congo Free State. Um, although the major activities of the missionaries are not covered, uh, it is worth pointing out one qualifier uh, that Ways of the World brings in with regard to the success of missionary efforts. Um, it's often suggested that missionaries succeeded uh, on their own in a sense, but if you look at which missionaries had the greatest success with indigenous populations in new imperialism colonies, it tended to be indigenous missionaries, so uh, a core of converts of the European missionaries. So that's an important thing to keep in mind that this, uh, this th these missionary efforts uh, this broad set of missionary efforts is not solely a European project. Uh, the final thing to uh, pay attention to, I think, is connected to the last theme of the third section of chapter uh, 20, and that is uh, the theme of uh, European efforts to divide uh, colonized peoples into tribes uh, and or races which, as Ways of the World suggests, and as we have discussed in class, was very arbitrary and could have very negative consequences. Uh, in the case of uh, the Rwandan genocide, for example, as we discussed last time in class, uh, it has been suggested by some scholars that the uh, incredible uh, hatred uh, and discord between the Hutus and the Tutsi uh, may well uh, be largely ascribable to uh, categorizations uh, and labelings that the Belgians applied to these groups. Uh, however, in the case of the BBC4 documentary, we don't see this 
uh, kind of maneuver uh, in quite so overt a manner. Instead, if we look at le force publique, we see it uh, in the background because the le force publique consisted of uh, more than one uh, ethnic group, if you will. Uh, there were Africans from the west of Africa in the force publique, there were Africans from Zanzibar, so from the east of Africa, and also uh, people from various parts of what would become uh, the Congo Free State. And the thinking of Leopold and the European officers who headed the force publique in doing this, uh, as I'm sure you can guess, was to ensure that uh, no one from a particular region would be uh, of the uh, where the le force publique would be active would uh, himself uh, be active in that region uh, for the obvious reason that that person might be likely to be less willing to carry out the orders uh, of officers however in dividing up the personnel of le force publique in this way clearly uh, Leopold and uh, his assistants, if you will, uh, were making assumptions about categorizations of ethnic groups. So even if it's only in the background, we can see that tribe and race uh, do play something of a role in the events narrated by the BBC4 documentary. So this is the uh, end of this video, and I hope it's been helpful, and I hope that the first one was as well. Uh, and I'll sign off now.